Hello there, and welcome to your new Vault Life. Today, you're going to receive an introduction into living after the world has ended. Now do not worry, this is going to be a smooth and easy process. Please do try and ignore any horrific screams or explosions that may be in your vicinity. I promise, now that the vault doors are closed, you're perfectly safe. That's a vault tech guarantee, not that you'd be able to hold us accountable in the apocalypse. Now while we are awaiting the arrival of your new vault neighbors, let's go ahead and look at what entertainment options are available to keep you company. If I may be so bold as to propose a viewing option, our newly released Fallout show, you might find extra apropos to your current circumstances. My review on it? I think it was pretty good. No, there is no way I'm keeping that up for the entire review, but today let's go ahead and jump on into my review of the new Fallout show. The show that some said was dead on arrival because it was woke and others said might be the new video game to break the video game curse even though that curse has been like broken for adaptation for decades now well in reality it turns out the show is pretty good i wouldn't say it's nearly as good as its current rating on rotten tomatoes uh kind of implies because you know rotten tomatoes isn't about hey is this a 10 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10 it's binary and all this is saying is a lot of people thought it was Passable, good, and I think it's a little bit better than that without being exceptional. I will say though, from beginning to end, I was wildly entertained. But getting into it, this is Amazon Prime's adaptation of the very well-known Fallout video game series that takes place in an atom punk post-apocalyptic Earth, alternate history Earth. And from what I remember, having not played all of the games and not having played any recently, this is a new story for Fallout. And we follow the story of Lucy, played by Ella Purnell, the daughter of Kyle McLaughlin. I do not remember his character name. There is no way I'll ever remember it. He is Agent Cooper or Kyle McLaughlin. My brain is incapable of comprehending anything else. Moving on. And they live in Vault 33, which is a part of a community of three vaults, including 31 and 32. And through a peak of the whole season pilot, a conflict is introduced that results in Lucy needing to leave her vault and venture out into the wastelands. And if you want my completely spoiler-free thoughts, I think this was a very safe adaptation played close to the chest, but of a great enough effort and quality that I really didn't end up minding how simple a lot of the story ended up being. What I think ends up saving a lot of this is there is a lot of moral play that is absolutely necessary in the world of Fallout. Everything is kind of terrible, so having this doughy-eyed, fish-out-of-water approach that Lucy does when she first enters the Wastelands ends up being not only a great source of comedy, but where we end up seeing the overall character work of the show shine. And this isn't lost on pretty much any of the major pro and anti Antagonists. All of them have motivations, understandings, and a shift throughout the show that makes all of them kind of feel like they're swirling around each other. But it's not brilliantly written, and again, it kind of falls into a rather safe and simple setup that's also reflected in, I think, the structure and delivery of nearly the entire story. Despite being entertained, I felt the length of nearly every episode, especially the pilot, due to just how step by step, everything tends to happen. There are a couple of side quest episodes in the middle as well that are clearly in reference to the game, not only doing the like whole like vault mystery stuff going on, but those unfortunately are the weakest episodes. Though the actual end of the season does manage to catch up to where the pilot was in quality, and I'm happy to see that kind of slight you for my overall rating for each episode without any of them descending in it bad. Nothing was actually like awful here or even close. Now, despite again, Again, feeling the length of each episode, I was never wanting to turn it off, and the tone, even in the weakest episodes, was pitch perfect. If you have played any of these games, there is this overwhelming depravity to the Fallout universe that is undercut, but never in a clumsy Marvel-esque way, by a unrelenting sense of humor. Whether it's the voice performances, items, or storylines in the games, this is something that is satirical. And the Fallout show has managed to capture a lot of that comedy, uh, remark I would say better, better than the games. I found this to be hilarious and it was relying on gore and shock value but actually executed well enough that both Kayla and I were going damn people hear like shock value and they think that immediately means bad or dumb no if that's appropriate to the story you're telling and it's in the world seeing someone get caught in a massive too large bear trap and rot 
that says something and it's ah! <laughs> the overall story i find a bit predictable and simplistic but it does have thematic play there are ideas and intent behind almost everything you're seeing it's really simple but it's tightly knit this is a surprisingly tight show which i believe they're only really allowed to do because they are not trying to follow any direct storyline from the games i don't think people play the fallout games for these ungodly amount of hours because they're replaying it for the story i think it's the immersion in the world the sense of humor commentary that people enjoy and that is where this show is absolutely putting its greatest amount of effort storytelling wise. And even in its characters from Maximus to Lucy and the ghoul, all of them are conceptually there for a reason, very well motivated and change in a sensical way from the first to last episode consistently. And I even really like the parallels that exist between Lucy and the ghoul and how they're clearly a reflection of each other, despite being so drastically on the opposite side of things through flashbacks that occur throughout the show, you really end up seeing that they're both on a similar path. And season one is largely about Lucy catching up to him, keeping it spoiler free while retaining her doughy eyed okie dokie <laughs> mentality towards nearly everything. She nudges him one way and he drags her another. But even the side characters were wonderful. There is a squire to a squire here who arrives and despite being on the screen for maybe 30 minutes and doing something horrible to a dog, I really like him and his like charisma. Everyone who's brought in is played by an actor who's known for being able to do that and is given the time to breathe to even for a bit part do something memorable. I mean, God, the chicken f***er. That's not gonna leave my brain anytime soon. Okay, we've said some really nice things. Time to say some less nice things. The conveniences that continually happen in this script. There's absolutely an argument to be made that it's fiction, turn it off, just enjoy, sure. But, oh my God, I wanna point out, California, kind of a chunky state. It's got some girth to it. Maybe you were once before, but that isn't the case anymore. It was reduced down to the size of a football field. That, along with some stormtrooper aim, which can be waved away to an extent, just made it feel like another pass through the script, just adding some slight justifications here and there, could have made that trend towards conveniences far less distracting. Well, I do think many of the sets absolutely did the source material justice, there was a overall approach to the cinematography that made me continually feel like everything just ended right out of camera. There wasn't that Oh, inspiring sense that can make a smaller set feel a whole lot more immersive. But all right, let's make it a compliment sandwich, right? Got it in the negative, bring back in some positive. I always appreciate it when a show puts extra effort into a pilot, they take a good extra hunk of the budget and understand this is where the most hooks are being set. This is our big pitch to you and makes it something a bit extra special. I think this isn't quite as bad as like a show like Fringe where the first episode kind of feels like a movie and then everything else from there clearly on a budget, but it's in that same ballpark and the pilot here was just a wonderful viewing experience on its own. If you just wanna introduce someone to the idea of Adam Punk, I would show them that pilot. And in that pilot, I found myself asking a lot of things that if they went unaddressed, could have felt like plot holes, but I was really happy to see nearly every single one of those concerns raised and addressed. I actually had a small list and by the end of the season, it was empty. So before we get in the spoiler section, I'm gonna say overall for the Fallout show, I'm feeling a really solid seven. It's not something I'm gonna feel the need to rewatch endlessly, but I'm totally here for a season two and I'm I'm glad to just have another show that I can go, oh, that was good. And for certain people I know who are more into the Adam Punk thing, I'm more of a cyberpunk guy myself. I'll absolutely be highly recommending it to them. Now, while the people who don't want spoilers are bouncing on out of here, I'll just get a couple more quickie things out of the way. Music choices absolutely live up to the reputation of the game because I think they just used a lot of the same ones and so it just fit and mwah. And there were a few trends towards wonky shots for various uh, elements they were having to repeatedly bring in. And so if you're someone who gets distracted by wonkier VFX, some of it's gonna look great. Others, not so much. But even that kind of fits with the tone because like, yeah, this is a goofy show and the nights, 
They are intimidating, but also look like something you would see at a Comic-Con. But now that those cowards have had time to scurry back to their vaults, let's get into the pilot. Uh, I really love the warrior bride trope. Something about a woman in a wedding dress kicking ass I deeply enjoy, not willing to question it, watch Ready or Not if you haven't. And this doughy-eyed character who we're shown is a bit naive, but also well-trained in fighting, able to handle herself, is immediately someone who I was just like, even if the remaining plot lines totally fall apart, I will finish this season just to see them interacting with this world. Everything is so vile. It is a disgusting disgusting show to watch, it deliberately so, and they make it very clear in this first episode that the main idea going forward is going to be the moral pull back and forth of trying to live up to a golden rule while surviving in an apocalypse. And well, yes, that is a trope as well in terms of even like a theme. It's one I really enjoy. And now that I can talk about this character being important without it being a spoiler, I love that we kept cutting back to Norm throughout the season. The first time we did, I had a very visceral like, uh oh, no, don't like that reaction, but he ended up being one of the most compelling people to follow. This purposely shot to highlight continually little man being the one to not be a coward and try and figure out the answers of to how they all ended up here, why, what is actually going on. It made Norm one of the most compelling characters, I would even say on the same level of Maximus, despite having drastically less screen time. And the Knight Titus ordeal, not my favorite storyline, but I do believe this performance of all of the main cast is the most delicate. And I'm happy to say that I don't know the actor's name. I'll have it on screen now. They demolished it, especially around the feelings of guilt. And I love that the writers actually allowed him not to make the stupid decision and like keep all these secrets until they're exposed. And no, he opens up, he talks. It made it so that while I wasn't really invested in the Brotherhood of Steel, I really cared about him. And speaking of hymns I care about, our ghoul. Cooper Howard in just how extreme of a different man he is now versus who he was is alone a compelling enough case for me to be totally fine with, yeah, he's a typical gunslinger Western stereotype. That trope is being supported by a premise that in itself is a trope, but it's a pairing I'm gonna love. It's full of promise. It tells you are gonna see someone who we're getting emotionally invested in, seeing him in the past go through some tragedy and letting you know this pre-storyline is not going to go well and it's gonna make you understand why exactly he behaves so brutally in the present. And there are plenty of indications during his present storyline to let you know he's not horrific. Like he does stab a dog, but he then helps it get back and better before exploiting it again. Like, it's a it's a delicate line. It speaks to what I was saying before, though, how he is a reflection of Ella Purnell's character in Lucy, a similar level of into a new world transformation. And at the end of the season, when Lucy has caught up, it makes watching the two of them literally walk off into a sunset together it just makes season two feel like, oh yeah, absolutely. No, 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 I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. There's no heavy lifting required, but your brain does start making all kind of connections just ahead of the narrative so that when they finally arrive, you feel very satisfied. It's tight writing. And I always appreciate when a show is willing to add in smaller details and trust that your brain is gonna run with it in a direction it intends. Like we get the Raiders attacking on the wedding night and it's awful, but you get this kernel of the man saying it's the best day he's ever had, despite him seeing pretty uncomfortable the entire time he's been in Vault 33, her husband, I mean. And that alone is setting up, of course, the Lucy problem of trying to come to grips with her view on the world versus those that she is aware have just had a whole other existence and so she can't exactly judge them. I feel like this is nearly a best case scenario for Fallout going into season two because it's gotten a lot of the heavy lifting out of the way where people who haven't played the games now fully understand this world if they watch all of season one. And they've set up through telling a satisfying story, a whole lot of conflicts between these factions that I hope that means they'll play it a bit less safe now that all that heavy lifting is out of the way. I'm hoping I'm right when I say I see undercurrents of a bit more oomph to the story next season already existing here in season one. I wanna be proven right not wrong. But that is just my rambly thoughts on the new Fallout show. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.